one and two. Big change, though, for BYU to start this game. They are without two of their main players. We'll talk about that in a bit as Iowa State controls the opening tip. Lipsy, the point guard, off a of Jones screen. Drifts off to the left. Here's the short shooting freshman, Bonchilovic. Little penetration. Gilbert inside. And a turnover for the Cyclones. Trey King with the traveling violation. And right there, you see in the half court, you see BYU starting five. Jackson Robinson, Sean, getting his first start of the season here tonight. But Iowa State, first possession, trying to work that interior. So Robinson makes his first start of the season. No Trevin Nell, the most lethal outside shooter for BYU, out with a foot injury. So players like Spencer Johnson are going to have to step up. Also, no Fusinci Triore. He is out with a lingering hamstring issue. The starting five for the Cyclones, Lipsy, Gilbert, King, Jones, Momchilovic. Lipsy making his 50th consecutive start, the outstanding sophomore. Gilbert bounces it inside. Jones with the sky hook. No one and done for the Cyclones. And you've seen it already in the first two offensive possessions for Iowa State. Their bigs really move well away from the ball. Johnson with the layup. Give the assist to Khalifa. And, man, what a find he has been for BYU. Yeah, and a terrific career three-point shooter at 40%. Has struggled a little bit this season at 30, but it's still there. He shot it well the last couple of games. Great backdoor cut because you know Iowa State's going to extend on the shooting of BYU on the perimeter. Tough shot by Momchilovic, and man, he has hit these time and time again this year. Such great poise, and really skilled inside out. Shoots the three, Sean. You can put him on the block, and then in the mid post, that's what he likes to do is fade there. Good recovery inside. That's Lipsy airborne with the swat. Waterman thought he was in the clear. Gilbert puts on the brakes, nowhere to go, backs it out to Taman Lipsy. Lipsy leads this Iowa State team in virtually every category, and bingo from downtown. And his jumper much improved right there, plenty of room, but BYU is going to be concerned about drive first. Gallon Hall to the corner, this is Waterman, and he gets it right back. And that is a great sign if you're a BYU fan. Waterman in Big 12 play, just one of 13 from three-point range, and without Nell tonight, that's a good sign. Lipsy unable to finish. Here comes BYU wanting to push the tempo. Hall clears it. Waterman, two in a row. And that's what T.J. Osselberger was concerned about. They all will push the Cyclones in transition, Sean, but they want to be careful of quick shots. And that last possession was quick. That allowed BYU to get out and run. Let's take a look at those last two threes from BYU. Here's the one in the corner. Nice drive. Waterman just being patient, flat along the baseline. And then Hall, understanding he's got a feel for it now, finds him there in transition. That's a great trail three from the big man. Waterman did not score a point Saturday in Orlando. He was 0 for 3 from the floor, grabbed seven rebounds, so a really big start for him with you no know, Trevin Nell in the lineup tonight for the Cougars. Yeah, and his defensive rebounding will be every bit as important as those last two threes he's hit because of Iowa State's ability to attack the offensive glass. Trey King, the offensive rebound, second chance for Iowa State. Couple of new cyclones in. One of them is Hassan Ward. Hello. Crowd didn't like that contact right there, but that allowed a broken floor and numbers for Iowa State. So you, you see, they too, just like the Cougars, really moved the ball well in the half court offensively. Well, Pope talked about that in the shoot around earlier today the physicality that Iowa State brings, especially with their bigs. Five to shoot, cross court pass into the opposite corner. Tough defense here by Lipsy. Long three is up, well short. Half-court defense that Iowa State is really good at, one of the best in the country. And they just make you so uncomfortable. They never let you have any freedom offensively. It's very physical, and they're always right there on the catch. 
King, the senior from Lexington, working his way in on Waterman, and he throws it away. Hall with the takeaway. He'll challenge Montilovic, and he takes it right to the freshman. And a great defensive job by Waterman, walling up right there, forcing the turnover, and that allows Hall, the talented sophomore, to get that easy one there in transition. Long three from the Buffalo transfer, and it's good. Curtis Jones, who played a season-high 30 minutes in Iowa State's win against Oklahoma State on Wednesday. Long three right back for BYU, Jackson Robinson, and they're letting them fly, no surprise. Well, that's the thing with this BYU ball club is you can't sleep on anybody. Mark Pope will have four, sometimes five players on the floor that not only shoot the three well, but shoot it with range. So you have to meet them high up the floor. Bob inside, freed up, and a good look by Lipsy as he threaded the needle. Easy lay in for King. Lipsy has such a good floor game, and he plays with such confidence. He saw Waterman lose sight of the ball and threw it right by his ear. Lipa leaning in, back to a cut. There's Waterman gathering, and he'll get two shots. Looks like Jones clipped him. And we will get our first time out in the action. Noah Water won the grinder, and he has done such a terrific job in his third season. Of course, those Iowa State ties help. So he understands the culture, has a great pre appreciation for Ames, Iowa State's fans. And they know who they are, don't they, Sean? I mean, it's, I mean, we're going to, in his words, we're going to defend, we're going to take care of the ball, and make sure the right guys are shooting it. And uh, they do it in a great way. And they probably are one of the hardest working teams as far as they are never letting up the amp as far as the gas on the pedal, especially on the defensive end. Yeah, and you look at tonight where you play a really excellent offensive team on the road in BYU, you know, some coaches might play more straight up or get a little conservative. He He's trying to get his team to ramp up what they traditionally do defensively. Rob Jones back in the lineup, unable to hit inside. BYU doing a nice job early on, on the defensive glass. It's an area Iowa State has been able to get on a second and third chance opportunities because of their bigs and their athleticism this year. See the patented double team that we were talking about. Richie Saunders into the game for the first time, bounces it across the way. Robinson's three won't go. Waterman fights for it. And free throws coming up for Atiki Atiki. Ali, the junior from Tanzania, London Academy. He's going to get a couple of free throws. Former Cyclone Tyrese Halliburton. He is here watching his Cyclones in action. Indiana played Utah last night. Tyrese, we're hoping he gets better. He's... Missed the last few games with that hamstring injury, currently leading the NBA in assists. And just a long line of point guards for Iowa State throughout the years. Fortunate to have uh, called a few games in his Iowa State career. Great person, great teammate, obviously an elite NBA player. It has always amazed me at all levels his ability to make all the plays that he does and hardly ever turn it over. I mean, it's, it's unreal. Assist the turnover ratio, incredible. Jones fouled as he peeled to the hoop, and he'll get two free throws. So, Brendan, any big surprises? Here we are, not quite seven minutes into it. I mean, no, not necessarily. I mean, I think if you're BYU, you you know, like the fact that Waterman's gotten involved uh, early, couple threes, an offensive rebound that kept the last possession alive, and, and he's going to need to help the Cougars at both ends. You know, Iowa State despite BYU coming out of the gate pretty well. I mean, it's it's a one-possession game, so this game will settle in for Mark Pope and T.J. Osselberger here at some point. Year five for Pope, and what a job, just like Osselberger, he has done. And over from Utah Valley. In fact, both of these coaches tonight, they spent stints as an assistant at these schools before getting the head job. Waterman is feeling it tonight. His shot rims out. Fight for the rebound taken by Iowa State. Here comes Keyshawn Gilbert. And a good job, Sean, of Hall getting out of that double team. Although they don't get that shot to go, that's what they're going to have to do, be strong with the basketball. 
Third turnover on the night for Iowa State. Take a look at these two coaches. Mark Pope won a national championship as a player. He was team captain for Kentucky in 1996, while Hotzelberger had the remarkable turnaround in Ames year one, and he has continued that momentum. What a job he has done with this team this year. A lot of youth. It's that same recipe, hard nose, in your face style of basketball, and it's worked. Long three. Robinson lets her fly. No. Ball being batted around like a tether ball, and Waterman saves it. A right to Momchilovic. Cougars by three. 12.28 to go in this first half. Three ball on the way. No. And nothing but white jerseys inside for the rebound. Iowa State now 5 of 10 from the floor. BYU has cooled off a little bit. 5 of 11. Both teams got off to scorching starts. Shot clock to 6. Hall looking for a screen. Taken away. Lipsy gets it. Beats. And the layup for Gilbert. Well, right there, the trap on the sideline. Second time they've tried to do that here recently in Hall. Back-to-back -back turnovers by BYU. Timeout of the action. On the weak side, but easier said than done with the hard pressure, aggressive nature that T.J. Osberger's team is defensive. And Mark Pope talked a lot about what Lipsy brings to the table, his ability to read plays, his anticipation, always a, a step or two in front of the opposition. This is what Gilbert does best, and that's attack the hoop, and it's followed up. Beautifully by Hassam Ward. Ward with four. Quick counter. BYU. And Johnson gets the trifecta. Well, a great follow by Ward, who has really figured out how to score without the ball really getting to him in scoring positions. That was an offensive rebound. Conversely, when you play BYU, you know, even if you score, you can't celebrate. You have to sprint back and find shooters in transition. This is a team, when you look at BYU, that will shoot it up at will. They will crash the board. They will take care of the basketball. That was the recipe for success, especially during their non-conference schedule. A couple of near misses in Big 12 play, and they were able to win a crucial one on the road the other day against UCF as we get our first look at Jackson Pavletsky, the transfer from Wofford. Boy, and really nice to see, if you're T.J. Osselberger, him come right in and make a positive play. Showtime for Ward and Hassan Ward with six. And another thing you have to get used to when you play the Cyclones, their fives, in this case it's Ward, can really get up the floor in passing lanes. They're so athletic and long. And right there again, that causes another turnover. And watch this right here. I mean, you, you skip a man there offensively, and that's dangerous. And that's a clean one for Ward. And we talked about, you're talking about a guy in the last four games who was 21 of 28 from the floor. And it's from offensive rebounds we saw a couple of possessions go, run-throughs, those type of things. Really does a great job for Iowa State in that regard. This is Ward's fifth game back. He missed nine games, injured in November after starting the first three games. And T.J. Otzelberger talked about the development and really the buy-in that he had this offseason. Gilbert, a little bit out of control, throws it behind Trey King, and it's a Cyclone turnover. Lipsy Jones and Jones set to check in. Iowa State enjoying an 11-3 run, thanks in large part to four BYU turnovers. And you see three bodies, new bodies come in for Iowa State. And T.J. Osselberger talked to us today about how to help control pace against BYU. Using timeouts, substitution patterns, really concerned about BYU getting into any rhythm offensively because they're so elite when they're running things good. Three ball by Khalifa, no good. But Saunders giving BYU a second crack at it. Richie Saunders turned in 22 minutes, 8.4 rebounds against UCF. He's just a hard-nosed player. Well, kind of an interesting play right there, but stays with it. And Mark Pope talked about Saunders, said we have to find ways to continue to get him minutes. He makes a positive impact just about every 
phase of the game. And there's really nothing about him that, like, jumps out at you. And then suddenly, at the end of the game, you go, oh, my gosh, Saunders played great. I mean, I know, I know you, you specifically mentioned that to me early today, how much you liked him. He's one of those players, tons of energy. And if you go sheer numbers, he's one of the most efficient players that BYU has. And Mark Pope said he knows one speed, <laughs> and that's hard. Take away. Spencer Johnson in the clear. BYU back out in front. A BYU with a little version of their own extended pressure right there. Because of the bounce pass, it's a slow pass. It checks up. Spencer Johnson able to run through. Seven for Johnson. Halfway through this first half. Tight like we thought. Lipsy, step back. Tough shot. No. And a strong rebound by Khalifa. Leafa, the big man they brought in via the transfer portal this year. Extra pass up top. Jackson Robinson nearly stripped and a reach and a foul on Iowa State. We've talked so much about elite defense from Iowa State. How about BYU? And if you've noticed the last two or three half-court defensive possessions, BYU has done a great job of not letting them get downhill, not get an angle so they can attack the paint. You look at a couple possessions ago when Lipsy settled for a fadeaway jumper. That's exactly what Mark Pope wants out of the Cougars. You're anticipating BYU to show a lot of zone tonight. You see what they elect to do as we go deeper into this one. Yeah, they definitely have that. 2-3, 1-3-1. Mix it up. Lipsy the steal. Baseball home run pass down court. It's the high flyer. Gilbert for two. Man, court vision. Lipsy does it all. And he is so strong. When, when you drive it on him, he gets in legal guarding position. And if you're body to body with him, he forces you to turn it over. A finger roll with the left hand by Johnson. Johnson, a four year player. Excellent defensive player really has stepped up his offensive game this season He has and I like the fact that he has gotten to the rim on a couple occasions whether it's defense creating offense or right there on the drive Bob Jones hesitates 10 to shoot Khalifa on Jones will get it to Gilbert. He wants a screen Drives right slices just outside the lane tough high arcing shot left it short Khalifa another rebound Boy another great stop right there good communication good switch BYU did the right thing just keep Gilbert in front Off the Khalifa screen the three ball won't go this time for Spencer Johnson Gilbert races into the front court Curtis Jones Lipsy with it. He'll blow right by Robinson. What a pass to Jones. Well, that's a jet right there. I mean, as soon as the opportunity, the gap was created. I mean, it was a quick burst. You draw that big to you, and that's where Jones and a guy like Ward just wait for the play to develop, and Lipsy will find them. Lipsy, 14 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds a game. He just does it all. Second chance opportunity, BYU. Khalifa looking for that back door. Robinson obliges, just can't bring it in. BYU fans wanted a foul. Now a pull up three off transition. No. And this one ricochets out of bounds into the corner. Oh, and a good one here in the first half. Iowa State has played nine. Eight have scored in this first half. Hassan Ward leading the way off the bench with six. Johnson nine, Waterman eight to pace BYU. Strip and a takeaway. Lipsy eyes up ahead. This is Gilbert piercing into the paint briefly and an offensive foul called on the Cyclones. It's going to be Gilbert with the moving screen. And a couple turnovers for each ball club coming out of that timeout. Iowa State mixing it up here a little bit with some essentially three-quarter court pressure. T.J. Alsenberger talked about that too today. 
dead balls, timeouts, just mixing things up, trying to continue to keep BYU off rhythm. Fifth team foul on Iowa State. BYU sitting with just two fouls. Quick moving first half from Provo. Three from the corner. Strong rebound on the weak side by Atiki. Fight ensues. And let's see here. Oh, they're going to rule it. Jump ball and it stays with the Cougars. Well, like the motor right now from Atiki. And they need to have him because in this matchup, they need him active at both ends of the floor. A guy that's foul prone. In fact, he's had 11 fouls in 29 minutes yeah. in Big 12 play. That was the focus yeah. tonight. He just can't have that. He but fouled he, out in only seven minutes against UCF. Yeah, no doubt. But with the matchup here tonight, Mark Pope needs to get quite a bit more floor time out of him. That's a good sign right there. Well, right on cue, just as we were talking, it is Atiki with the moving screen, so he's picked up his second foul. Both teams exchanging turnovers. A concerned look with Mark Pope. Again, it's a thin bench tonight. Kuseni Triore, he is out with the hamstring tonight. Ward with a lazy pass, and it's taken away. Easy steal for Richie Saunders. Robinson wants to run wide open Johnson got it Well that one right there Robinson elected not to take it to the cup, but a good job of giving it in a perfect position Where Johnson could catch and shoot rhythm alley-oop inside rejected Beautifully by a tiki when it looked like Watson had lipped off Look at the ups and you see why they're so excited about a tiki. Yeah, absolutely great length right there tremendous timing Ward crashing the offensive glass Hassan Ward to get two shots Iowa State, one of three from the foul line in this first half. Yeah, and, and we've talked so much, and it's easy and obvious to do, about BYU's ability and desire to shoot the three-point shot. Iowa State's will to attack the paint. But something that's very key tonight, too, you, and this adheres to the free throw line. BYU has gone to the line less than anybody in the Big 12 Conference. And on the other side of it, Iowa State has gone more than anybody in the league, but right now Iowa State, excuse me, BYU for the most part in the half court defending without fouling, and they've gotten to the line more, at least this point, than the Cyclones. That's a good thing. Spencer Johnson has been a good thing in this first half. He leaves this three-pointer short. Iowa State to walk it up. 4.43 to go, first half. Entertaining first half when you look at it back and forth. Yeah, and you really haven't even had that mini run even yet. You know, that 8-2-6-0 type run. And you get a little bit of separation. Kavaletsky back in the Iowa State lineup. Sophomore runs into a brick wall there. Saunders with the takeaway. He'll take it all the way in, though. And fouled on the putback. Two free throws for Spencer Johnson trailing the play. And Pavletsky, the young sophomore right there. Second time, I believe, he's, he's gotten a little too deep right here. And his job when he goes into the game is, is just get the ball club into the offense, give Lipsy a couple of minutes break. And at this level, especially with the link, maturity, strength of a BYU, you're not going to be able to certainly turn the corner without any ball movement. Johnson with 13 in this first half. He really paid his dues before arriving here in Provo. He spent a redshirt year at Weber State, transferred midseason, left the scholarship behind. Eventually ended up at a community college in Salt Lake. 
for one season. Ended up at Utah Valley with Coach Polk, and then eventually, with his hard work and his determination, now a key player for the last few seasons here in Provo. Chilovich in and out, no. Fight for the rebound, saved out of there by Khalifa. BYU with a three point lead. Allen Hall reverses direction, runs in to help out defense. Long three after the hesitation, and Robinson buries it. Jones quiets the crowd. Well, I tell you what, I love that Iowa State is committed to getting it to the paint. And just mature possession right there, crowd into it after the big three. Johnson fouled by King, and he'll get three free throws. No answer right now. On his face, the sheer joy and the fun that he is having <laughs> coaching this team the first week through the Big 12. Well, I think the key is it's only been a week into the Big 12. You know, let's, uh, we'll revisit it when we see him uh, later in February. No, no, I'm kidding. Obviously, class individual. Um, you know, he talked about the opportunity of all the ranked teams that they get to play coming up, and, and many of those will be here in the Marriott Center. Talked about how his team excited about this season, uh, ready for it. And, there's, and, and he even said there's some adjustment, not because of lack of ability or capability, but uh, it's a much more physical league. Mentioned that uh, getting used to, and he, and he didn't mean this degrading, but the officiating. I mean, you're allowed to play a, a little bit more aggressively in this conference. But they have adjusted well. And I thought, Sean, the win at Central Florida was very important because they did it without having to score 80 points. It's how you win in this league are grinders down the stretch. They got stops, and that's how you win, especially on the road. Yeah, they, they proved they can win without hitting double-digit threes. Absolutely. They only hit nine in the win against the Knights. He talked about being allowed to play. You know, for him in this BYU, what's that mean for the Cougars? It lifts it, swishes it through. Well, I did, you know, it's just... It's just it's getting used to it, and it doesn't mean that it's, um, you know, it's poor officiating. The best officials are in this league. So it's, it's the best conference. These corner threes have been there tonight for BYU. That one spins out on Noah Waterman. T.J. Otzelberger brought it up with his transfer from UNLV and Keyshawn Gilbert. He said the Big 12 physicality that first game against Oklahoma yeah. jarred him a little bit. Well, the thing, too, for, for BYU maybe – anybody else is I think the biggest thing as far as the physical nature comes when you drive it when you drive it you have to drive it with strength because if you go in soft even if you get fouled the officials will assume you're weak and they won't give you the benefit of the doubt violent collision there with Khalifa and Lipsy and on the other end Spencer Johnson can do no wrong 22 is his career high he's pumped in 19 in this first half and a timeout, Iowa State. BYU with their largest lead. In Orlando, they're hoping it's a short-term injury, and they're able to get him back soon. What a start it has been for Nell. Keep in mind, he was finally healthy this year after a couple of years with shoulder issues. Utilized a red shirt last year, recovering from rotator cuff surgery. Yeah, you won't find a, a much quicker release anywhere in college basketball than Trevin Nell. A rare miss by Ward, and Waterman grabs the rebound. Important finish to this first half. Johnson splits the double team, gets it out high. Khalifa throws out the pump fake to the corner. Waterman in and out, no. Khalifa kept it alive. Back to Waterman. He'll go baseline. Some contact blocked out of there by Iowa State. Boy, they're letting him play here in this first half. Robinson for three. It won't go. There's a Cougar down under the basket, and it's Noah Waterman. Now, so you have a broken plate. You get run off the line right there. 
when defensive, you can go straight up and down if you're inside the arc, as Gilbert did right there. Looked like a lot more contact initially. This was felt like coming down. Gilbert got all basketball there. Got cracked on the head. Looked like he hit a kneecap with all the bodies underneath as he went crumbling down. We're just talking about the physicality of so, this conference. So just, you know, Waterman's been great tonight, but, but that's what I'm talking about. Right there, Waterman at 6'10", 6'11", and Gilbert, who's extremely athletic at 6'4". If you're going to drive it, you go right at his chin. The hesitation got Waterman just in a little bit of trouble. And Chilovich for three, and Iowa State needed that one. And when especially, Sean... Big bucket, cutting it to four, obviously. But with a stop here, Iowa State has a chance to close out the half offensively. Khalifa, the distributor, finds Saunders. And this crowd coming to their feet as Iowa State ventures one final time into the offensive zone. Lipsy will go to work. BYU with fouls to give. Lipsy shoots and hits. And that's how the first half will end. BYU. BYU shooting the three ball well. They also have a plus six advantage on the offensive glass. Yeah, and you and I touched on that in the first half. I, I think that is huge. Again, Iowa State offensively, what they want to do is create points off their defense by creating turnovers and then in the half court everything is downhill towards the rim and part of that is their ability to get the foul line BYU has defended without fouling pretty well same starting five for both teams high rainbow shot the teardrop straight through for Keyshawn Gilbert when Gilbert one of those guys for Iowa State if you get he, him going with Lipsy downhill guy that's really a dynamic scorer but in Big 12 play, he hasn't gotten off to as good a start as you saw in the non-conference. So that is a positive sign right there, right out of the gate for Iowa State. See the Cyclones pressuring the ball tightly. They get a switch up here. Rob Jones caught on Johnson. To the corner it goes. Robinson's three is short. Waterman with his activity able to get another offensive rebound for BYU. see Noah Waterman back out there. He was cracked on the top of the head late in the first half, and he has had a whale of a game here tonight. Yeah, did a great job on that weak side following the flight of the ball. And it is difficult when you defensive rebound to get an errant shot or certainly one that's an air ball. But Waterman has been active, as you said, Sean, at both ends of the floor. And been a big reason. You know, look, basketball's simple. You know, you and I do games. We basically talk about the same things each contest, right? It, it's defend. It's take care of the ball, which BYU did a nice job of the first half. It's rebound, which they have the advantage there. And then it's make sure the right guys are shooting. Let's see. Piercing inside. Missed the shot, but worked from Trey King on the offensive glass. Leaf of the foul. Good, which good is tell. Which is normal for me in everyday life as well. <laughs> Iowa State 71% this year from the foul line. Trey King 81% this year. Just on that follow through from King yeah. that caught Khalifa. King with three points. He makes both Iowa State back within two. Trey King, a veteran, 24 years old, the eighth oldest player in the country, and now an offensive foul on Jackson Robinson as he shoved off on Gilbert. Yeah, one of the things that makes Iowa State so tough defensively is so you have Taman Lipsy, who's an elite on ball defender, so too is Keyshawn Gilbert. And as TJ Osterberger got him in the portal, from UNLV, that's one of the things they liked about him. And what got Robinson in trouble there, Sean, is just the extension of the arm. And anytime you do that in the open floor in front of those officials, they will call that. 
Iowa State is not led and their last lead seven minutes in that first half and they won't get it done here as they have a go off of Jones and his forearm out of bounds. And one of the things as we, we watch BYU defensively, and this is the first live look that both of you and I have had of Mark Pope's team, a lot of size and length there. And that certainly is beneficial to you on the defensive end. Gilbert trying to get to the rim, but the length of BYU and the smart play of not leaving their feet and using that size advantage right there was solid. Rob Jones, a fan favorite back at Hilton Coliseum in Ames, another loud venue. BYU talked about how great of an environment, and it's going to be a good environment here after the dunk by Noah Waterman. Man, a great job of Hall right there. So, so he drags the double team, stretches it out, get it to Khalifa, who is great, especially if he has some room and space. And there was no pressure there. And if he doesn't have pressure on him, he finds the open man and drops dimes. Khalifa is a point guard in a 6-foot, 11-inch body. Great court vision, ball skills. And that's such a unique player. Lipsy too strong, tried to tip it to a teammate. Now watch this right here. Watch Hall. See, an extra durable. So you drag Iowa State players with you because they're going to hold you in that double team or hold that ball screen hedge a little long. And that was almost just like baiting Iowa State to you right there. Really like Hall and his toughness. I mean, you can tell he's mentally and physically tough when you watch him play. Khalifa again trying to find Waterman, and he was there. Trey King was forced to hold him. Otherwise, that was going to be another easy lay-in, and that is going to be the fourth. So King is going to have to exit stage right. Yeah, right there. You know, with BYU because of the shooting. You have to extend that on the perimeter. And that's a couple of times that BYU has nicely cut back door. That'll keep Iowa State honest. Key minutes now for Hassan Ward, who's in the game with the four fouls from King. One and done for BYU. Here comes Gilbert, full head of steam. Gives it to a trailing Ward. Sets a screen for Curtis Jones. Back out high to Lipsy. Lipsy to the elbow, tough shot, spins it up, no, Ward hustling after the loose ball. Second chance opportunity. That pass looked like it was intended for Lipsy, intercepted by Gilbert. And then he leaned in with his shoulder and the offensive foul on Keyshawn. Every time it looked like it was an opening on possession, Iowa State would get something easy. BYU recovers, Halt, great job. We've talked about elite on ball defending from Iowa State, this two from BYU, beat him to the spot, squared up. It's a no-doubter right there. Look at the play of Dallin Hall, much like Lipsy for Iowa State. He's only a sophomore. And what was so impressive last year in his true freshman season, he was only a month or two removed from a mission, and to jump in and really jump into the fray like he did and have the success really speaks a, a lot about who he is as a player and a person. Waterman fouled two more free throws for BYU. So Iowa State, or excuse me, BYU, looking more comfortable. Like I said, they've kind of figured out or gained confidence in how to attack Iowa State. We'll look at Hall right here, hit the seam. The gap's there. Well, this is a great look. And Hall does such a great job of not getting too deep. He knows when to hold up, when to set up his teammate. And Mark Pope certainly likes that. Noah Waterman a long way from home. He grew up in Savannah, New York, one of nine in the Waterman family. His older brother, Ben, introduced him to the sport of basketball. His hard-working mother, Kim, who actually was able to watch him play. The only time she's been able to watch him in person earlier this year, and she's enjoying this one back home in the Northeast. Five-point Cougar lead. Chilovich trying to get freed up. Good job there by Waterman. Closing the space. Lipsy darts a pass in the heavy traffic. Scrum on the floor. And we have a tie up. Arrow favoring BYU.
Taylor, the weak side help right there. Khalifa rotated over. It's after the good ball movement, swinging side to side to Lipsy. I and mean, you like that because you get the defense to shift. You get an elite playmaker attacking, but as Lipsy drove that left baseline, Khalifa sitting there waiting in help position. And that's one of the things, you know, we talked about BYU's improvement defensively this year. Their bigs don't leave their feet. Leaving the feet was Ward, but he got a piece of it. Hassan Ward saw Lipsy take a quick breather. T.J. Otzelberger playing with the media timeout coming up, trying to get his star sophomore point guard a little extra breather for the timeout coming up shortly. Two free throws for Jackson Robinson. Yeah, they'll get Lipsy. You got that under 16 media timeout coming up. You get him a little bit of an extended rest. Robinson making his first start, yet he is one of their top scorers. 14 points a game. Went off the bench this year, really accepted and embraced that role. He was injured at the start of the year and just kind of found his niche coming off the bench and what a punch he provides. Gilbert with the attack. No, loose ball picked up by Gilbert as he salvages a second crack at it. Inside pass. Here's Ward with the bunny. Rare miss from Hassan Ward. Timeout in the action. When we come back, Tyrese Al a special phone call to Milan to, to convince him that Ames is the spot. Take us through that phone call. Yeah, I mean, I think that they've used me a little bit to, you know, help recruit some guys. When Taman was in high school, I used to go to all his high school games and watch him play. Oh. Um, but yeah, Milan and, and Jackson Pavicheski, I mean, two Wisconsin guys trying to help them, you know, come to the good guys. Wisconsin pipeline has been strong through the years to Ames. BYU with their largest lead. Dallin Hall with the long ball. Cougars by 10. And a foul on Waterman as Gilbert took it in. Tyrese, what do, what do you think about Taman? Obviously, you saw him when he was young. Uh, was great as a freshman has really elevated this year and yeah he keeps growing he keeps growing uh he's got a chance to you know be one of the best players in school history the way he keeps playing and uh he's a winning player does winning things so uh it's good to see him having success and you know it's only up from here free throw line jumper and rob jones splashes it in with tj tyrese committed to getting that ball that paint uh, TJ's been great. TJ's been great. Year three for Otzelberger at Iowa State. Cyclones on the road down there eight. There and we there go. There we go. There is Gilbert as he goes tumbling down. When we talked to TJ Otzelberger earlier today, and he mentioned multiple times about Gilbert complimenting Lipsy and, and getting to the paint, driving hard, not settling for jumpers. Richie Saunders, who's had somewhat of a quiet night, able to hit the baseline, Jay. You know, Tyrese, we were talking in the first half, the physicality of this conference and how it prepares you for the next league. Talk a little bit about this. It's the best conference in basketball. We debate this in our locker room every day. <laughs> you know, we got a lot of ACC guys, got a lot of uh, SEC guys, all that stuff. But there's nothing like this. This is the best. Oh, it's the best league in the world. So, uh, you know, there's another good team that fits in right, 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 right where everybody else does. Saunders banged into and the foul on Jones. So I have to ask you, and I was fortunate to call some of your games when you were at Iowa State. But and I mentioned this in the first half when we, we recognize that you're here. Your ability, I mean, at all levels, to play like you do, the decision making and not turn it over. I mean, I mean, where does that come from? I mean, it's, it's really remarkable that yeah. you make so few mistakes. Yeah, I think just my teachers growing up and just valuing the ball. It was always when taught being the point guard is, you know, kind of like being the mom of the team. You know, keep everybody happy. You turn it over. That don't really keep your, <laughs> uh, your teammates happy, you know. So, trying to put it that way. Teams exchanging baskets. Khalifa gets his first two. Here comes the crowd again. BYU back up 10. Inside pass, Lipsy patient, able to get Khalifa to leave his feet. Also, Robinson, he landed awkwardly. Let's see if Jackson's all right, slowly getting back up to his feet. Yeah, again, 
BYU up 10. A little bit of separation. But, Sean, as we talked about, Iowa State does not settle. I mean, they're going to still attack the paint. In fact, Lipsy, he knows when they need a bucket that he's got to go make something happen immediately. Stop the momentum of BYU. Quick trigger three. Ooh. One offline. Iowa State second chance at it. BYU thought it hit the top of the basket. Jones attacks and he'll draw the foul. Uh, Tiki with a piece to the arm and Rob Jones to get to. You think the fans know that top of the square is not yeah, <laughs> Not the home fans. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know what they know. And again, Lipsy, I mean, so great at hitting those seams, getting to the heart. And those fives, Tyrese, you know, a Jones and a Ward, to us, it looks like they do just a great job letting the play develop and being opportunistic. Yeah, I think they've been really good at being patient. The offense is a little different than when I played here. They play more through the big. It's a little slower paced. Uh, so I think what's key for them is just be patient offensively, but I think I get some stops without fouling right now. Two clutch free throws by Jones, 59 percent are on the season. Iowa State down eight. Johnson brings the ball up ahead. Spencer Johnson really responsible for this BYU lead for his play in the first half. Had 19 in the first half. Allen Hall has been the distributor tonight. We'll do it here inside, oh. getting caught up in the air, and this will be a turnover on BYU. You had that call, Tyrese. Yeah, you're right. on top Come on of now. Allen. Come on now. They moved the ball really well, though. Wow, their offense is amazing. So where are you health-wise? Uh, I'm good, man. I should be back in a couple days. Uh, dodged a, a big injury, so, you know, God is good. God is good for sure. And just trying to get back and help the team. Come on. Curtis Jones and Iowa State shooting woes continue in this second half. Hall measures and buries. Okay, well, they are so good in transition. Those broken floors. T.J. Altsberger, wise timeout right here. Khalifa's runner in the lane all by himself and then in transition BYU is so good at spacing running to the three-point line especially when Hall leads a break he does such a great job of finding his teammates good set play after the timeout Gilbert Iowa State struggled from the floor another reason BYU has been able to open up this lead a little bit the Cyclones 4 of 13 from the floor here in the opening nine minutes Robinson playing with the three fouls. Same story for Atiki wearing number four in white. The Cyclones breaking up that defensive pressure. Robinson attacks and draws the foul. It's going to be Curtis Jones. Brendan free throws are yeah. becoming a factor for the Cougars here. This will be their 18th and 19th trip to the foul line, and we still have over 12 minutes to go. And he gets four on Curtis Jones as well, Sean. So with King and Curtis Jones now with four each, 12 minutes left. A little bit of managing of the rotation for T.J. Osselberger. But, no, absolutely. You know, right there you get a broken four. Robertson kind of weaves his way down, drives to contact. It's good to see. Robinson, as good as he's been, as talented as he is, coming into tonight, he'd only been in the line 17 times all year. Second full year in Provo for Robinson, and a tiki swats it. BYU wants to run. Johnson finishes on the other end. Well, we talked about a tiki tonight, especially being able to be out on the floor for that very reason right there. He stayed out of foul trouble. Allows him to make those rim protection type plays. A rare offensive rebound for Iowa State. Hassan Ward a second chance at it. Dangerous juncture for the clones on the road. Gilbert misses a couple, but the energy from Watson. And another foul as the two teams head. And, and the trouble with it, when you're playing them, it's multiple spots. You know, a lot of teams, it's 
one or two guys that you have to meet up high. In some cases, it's three or four when you play BYU. Gilbert, who has missed his last two three-pointers, just can't find the range, but yet another long offensive rebound. Caroms to the Cyclones. Lipsy attacking the hoop as it blocked. Where Waterman has been really good. And it was important for the fours and fives of BYU to be good at both ends of the floor. It was great about that. Used his length and his offhand to block that shot. Two free throws for Momchilovic. On a night in which BYU pretty much has dominated the offensive glass, this is one of those few possessions, Brendan, where Iowa State able to get some long rebounds, multiple opportunities. This time down the floor, and they will send out the good-looking freshman on his first trips to the free-throw line tonight. Well, the positive for the Cyclones, Sean, it is, it's in their DNA to get stops. I mean, they're defensive-oriented, even though BYU has scored 60 through three-quarters of this game. They turn the ball over, they can turn you over, and plus it's in their DNA to get to the line. And so I'd be surprised if the Cyclones don't have a run or two in them to get this back to being interesting. Shooting right into the teeth of the rock. That's the student section here at BYU. Cougars by 12. Khalifa surveys his options. There's the Waterman in the corner. He'll go baseline. His pass sailed on him, but there was some contact. The blocking foul underneath will be on Iowa State's Watson. Call a block on this possession. So let's there's Waterman on the drive. And a bang bang play right there. That certainly could have gone either way. BYU in the bonus. Waterman. 15 points, three rebounds tonight. Really a nice bounce back game offensively with no Trevin Nell and no Triore. They needed his offense and he has delivered. One of the sharpshooters in the Big 12 sideline tonight, Trevin Nell. He hit nine threes in this arena as you see more contact here and Brendan you said yeah that's that's getting a little man I, I think good officiating Keith Kimball TJ Osberger wanted the explanation spent the time to explain him in fact he pointed over to the direction of the scores table on the monitor essentially I think he was telling TJ, it was a pretty easy one to navigate through. And that's a big loss. Obviously, Ward has been great for Iowa State. That five position between he and Robert Jones has been really productive as of late. So Ward heads into the tunnel below. BYU has put the Cyclones in a real precarious spot now. So, you know, Sean, you've seen it. Sometimes that can spark a team if you're in Iowa State. It can certainly go in either direction. Last touch by the Cyclones. Rob Jones getting his hands on it. So we go back to the flagrant two, and it's the left arm initiating contact, the elbow right underneath yeah, the chin I, I, of Saunders. And it's always, uh, not only the initiating right there with the shoulder, but then he extended through it, through the contact. Allen Hall over to Saunders. Saunders with that shot clock winding down, lets her fly. Jones the rebound. See if Lipsy can restore some order if you're Iowa State. Tough environment on the road, down 16 without one of your more physical and athletic players for this home stretch run. Lipsy gets caught up in the air, trying to lob it into Jones, batted away by Hull. Say what just been nowhere for Iowa State to go. What BYU has done defensively 
also, Sean, is they haven't gone out of position. We talked about they have pretty good size at multiple spots in length, and they've just used that size, especially on the perimeter, to keep those small guards in front. Jones goes down hard as he tried to stuff it home on the inbound. And he's still on the court. Rob Jones taking his collective breath. And, man, these two teams just exchanging blows here over the last few moments. Well, Iowa State's not going to stop attacking that rim. Right there, Jones, that's what you have to do. You catch that ball, goes strong, just got a little bit off balance when he grabbed that rim, lost his feet. Good to see him get up okay. So now you got to really lean on Jones, obviously, with Ward being unavailable with the ejection at the five position. Look at that behind there. Michael Scott would be the biggest distractor if I was at the foul line. <laughs> exactly. Jones misfires. He'll get a second. You see Rob Jones still trying to shake those cobwebs from that last collision with Khalifa. Khalifa yeah. picking up his second foul. Missed them both. Fight for the rebound. Good energy there by King. Let's see who a touch last. That was all Trey King with his effort. Yeah, that, that background may have affected that. Those two free throws. And that's what King does. Tons of That's a great play. Great effort to extend your possession right here. Iowa State. Meaning to start cut into this deficit and Jackson Pavletsky. It's his jump shot, and Iowa State within 14. Yeah, another positive play offensively right there. Just solid. They backed off of him. Plenty of room for him to knock that down. Pavletsky, the SoCon freshman of the year, a season ago for Wofford. So the transfers they brought in. Three ball up, and it's good. It seems like BYU has an answer every time. And, and the answer on that possession was Hall. I just love how he keeps his dribble alive. He doesn't get too deep. Chima Beach. BYU is connected on five of their last six field goals. Pope redirecting traffic. Allen Hall working on the sophomore. Avaletsky. Khalifa back to the hoop. Jones heckling him. Back to Hall. Jones with that help out. Forced the double team. That opened up Khalifa. No. And then Chilovich grabs the board. And a quiet second half for Lipsy. He'll try to change that. Not happening. Lipsy started the night three of four since. He's went 0 for 7. Yeah, he, he had the room, but he also had the matchup. Long three for Dowlin Hall. And BYU trying to throw the knockout punch. All 14,000 on their feet. And Momchilovic fouled and he'll get three. Tav, he's only taken two shots here in the second. Made both of those. But you have tremendous balance right now for BYU, which makes it even more difficult to defend. Four players in double figures. Waterman has made shots in both halves. But I tell you what, and I, I expected that I would be seeing him in person. Dallin Hall can play. And a, a legit high-level Big 12 point guard. We've seen him do some things defensively. His floor game has been outstanding. He's 4-4 four four from the floor. But more importantly, Sean, he has seven assists and one turnover. Seven assists and one turnover against a, an elite defensive team, not only in this big-time conference, but nationally. He's been absolutely outstanding after being a little bit shaky early, completely settled in and been mature. Turnover here on Robinson. You know, you look at Dallin Hall, he's now made a three-pointer in 12 straight games this year, and this second half, he has been the difference maker. Three for three from downtown. 
11 points, seven assists for Hull. Rare turnover by BYU. The freshman will try to shoot Iowa State back into it, not falling tonight. One and done for ISU. Robinson wheels it into the front court. BYU with only three turnovers here in this second half. They're going to beat Iowa State, get to the foul line, and take care of the basketball. And it doesn't hurt when you're knocking in 39% from three-point land as well. I've just been impressed so much with BYU defensively. And as you will know, look, and offensively, shot it great from three, and, they, and that's nothing new. But there's going to be nights that that doesn't happen, like in Orlando against Central Florida. And if Mark Pope's team continues to improve defensively, which also includes, Sean, board play defensively, right? And they, they've held more than their own here tonight in Provo. And that's the formula. You defend and you take care of the ball. Uh, you rebound well. In this league, you have a chance every night. And that's the way they've been playing the last couple of ball games. Rob Jones does a lot of things well, but foul shooting has been one of the areas he's tried to improve on tonight. Now three of eight. A couple of key misses. Iowa State running out of time here. Khalifa. Patient with the ball. Iowa State working to deny Dallin Hall a touch. Shot clock at 10. Khalifa rotates it. Here goes Johnson to the elbow. Down to the block. Good D there by King. Here's Khalifa letting her fly. No, but Waterman has it. Land in his lap and a second chance for BYU. Yeah, that was a really good defensive stand by Iowa State. And that's a killer when you give up that offensive rebound. Certainly when you're down 15 with six and a half left. Backdoor cut. Oh, does he have court vision? Khalifa with another helper. Robinson, the easy layup. Timeout, Iowa State. Be honest, and, and, and I've, I have watched BYU over the years. And when it was announced that they would come into this league, I thought certainly offensively they'll be tough to contend with. But how quick can they adjust to understanding how important defense is in the physical nature of it? And... And I, I think they had that mindset in the non-conference. The question was, you know, they beat some good ball clubs, San Diego State, Arizona State, NC State. But some of that schedule was pretty soft. So when you're new, it's like, okay, what's going to happen when you get to big boy time? Well, they shook off a tough loss here against Cincinnati, played Baylor tough in Waco, and then they go win that one at UCF in a way that they traditionally haven't won. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with them defensively. I, I, I really am much better with my uh, live eyes put on them than I anticipated. Their only loss, their only blemish in the non-conference schedule was to rival Utah, which is the nation's tallest team, and that was at the Huntsman Center. And other than that, it was a perfect non-conference run. And leading by 15, looking for their second straight Big 12 victory. One inside the Marriott Center. They felt they let one get away against Cincinnati in the Big 12 debut. Hall knifes his way through, and one of those rare times where a pass is offline from Dallin Hall. <laughs> he knows that was, I, I think that was a up 15, a little bit higher degree of difficulty. Gilbert, who's been active in the second half, he'll take it right in on Khalifa. Challenge the big man and score. Yeah, great job right there. Had Khalifa backpedaling right at his chest. Great finish. The Cyclone defense can create some turnovers now. They're going to need it. Approach the five and a half minute mark. Khalifa looking for some options. Sends that one hand bounce pass. Hall elected not to shoot it. Instead, the unselfish play, the extra pass, yeah, and it's Johnson on the weak side. Yeah, once the help was forced off the Khalifa, you've seen it over the years. I mean, there's eight or nine teams consistently in the top 45 or 50. 
And these four additions have been outstanding. When you look at BYU, West Miller's team at Cincinnati, they're going to continue to get better. Central Florida beating Kansas. And obviously Houston, that was, that was a no-brainer. Mark Pope mentioned today, right? He said Houston, number one, two, or three team in the country, loses two early on a Big 12 conference play. He said this league is great. BYU was ranked as high as 12, and they started 0-2 in the conference. Saunders gets a penetrating shot to go. Kansas at 14 and 2. Houston and Baylor share that record. Oklahoma, TCU, BYU, Iowa State. How about Texas Tech? I'm beaten in conference play. Yeah, Grant McCaslin, first year head coach there, via North Texas, doing a, a great job there in Lubbock. Trap coming. Waterman in a tough spot. Goes over the top of the smaller defenders. Here is Saunders. Count it. He's fouled. Well, except for a couple of early possessions in the game, if you look back, Sean, BYU has handled any trap that Iowa State has put on them. I and mean, that's dead man's land right there in that far, far corner. But if you handle it with strength, you get out. The numbers are there. The way they move it, great cut right there by Saunders. And BYU put on an offensive clinic here tonight. Been an eventful five, six months for Richie Saunders. He was married back on September 1st. Basketball in the family. Former BYU hoop standout, Sierra Johnson. Richie Saunders seeing his minutes elevate the last couple of games. Khalifa with the block. Allen Hall stop and go to the corner. This place will go nuts if. Saunders could have found the range. Instead, it's Iowa State. Jones hesitates. Now he'll pump it up. No. Khalifa on the tip rebound. One thing about this conference. Wow. See the wrap around Waterman. No follow-up is there by Johnson. <laughs> He is creative. It's every type of pass, and this crowd showing their appreciation. All away from the action, looked like Paul shoved off on Watson. Here's at Iowa State. They have been elite defensively, and Mark Pope's team has just come out. They've played comfortable. We're able to minimize turnovers, which is first and foremost when you play Iowa State. Ten on the night for the second half, just four for BYU. And then the ability, especially in transition, and we talked about it early in the game, if they get defensive rebound, BYU is going to get a lot of open threes. Waterman with an exclamation point. This crowd sensing a first, BYU has never beat Iowa State. 0-6 oh, all-time against the Cyclones. Spinning in Gilbert to get two free throws. Yeah, just a little advance up the floor. Waterman in rhythm. It, it makes it difficult when virtually the entire floor can knock down a three. And the thing about BYU, when, when you talk about ball clubs, Sean, that rely upon the three-point shot, a lot of them is because they can't get anything else. The easy thing to do is take jumpers or contested threes, especially this day and age when the game is so perimeter-oriented. But Mark Pope's team, the ball moves. They share it. It starts with Hall. I mean, you could do things through Khalifa. And these players are mature and they're smart. The spacing is good. And, and also, you know, you look early in the game, they mixed in backdoor cuts. They drove it some, honestly, more than we have seen thus far in Big 12 Conference play. So they are definitely adjusting to what the defenses are doing to them in the Big 12. 
Well, there was just so many question marks coming into this season. The inaugural run for BYU in the Big 12. They were picked 13th in the preseason media poll out of 14. And they are just dropping dimes all over the floor right now as Robinson connects. It was the lowest expectation as far as the conference ranking since 2005 and year one of the Dave Rose era back in the, the Mountain West days. 87-66. Well, I, I mentioned it. Not that my opinion means anything, but I, 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 we know they can shoot the three, and they're going to have nights like this. But I have left impressed with the other things. Defense, rebounding, ball security. Ball security against a team that is one of the best in the country in takeaways. Lob inside. And misfire by King, but he stays with it. Count it and a foul for Trey King. King was plagued by early foul trouble in this one. Picked up four fouls early, but he continues to battle underneath. First full season with Iowa State. He was eligible December 18th last year, his second year. The transfer from Eastern Kentucky. And a big round of applause. Robinson heading to the bench. Johnson and Waterman, those three players. What a night for the trio. Yeah, and again, without Nell, you needed some others to step up. Johnson was great the first half, and good to see Jackson Robinson get into double figures. If you look at first three ball games of Big 12 play, I felt like Big 12 teams out physicaled him and shoved him out of what he wanted to do. Tonight, he was able to become productive. Defend the home hardwood in the Big 12, a must. BYU lost to Cincinnati to start conference play, their second crack at it. Going to get the job done here tonight. Ball is pass too hard, too hot to handle. Now, 13 of these. And Robinson right there, catch and shoot in rhythm. And BYU's utilized the skip pass, or at least skipping a swing around man. Because. Iowa State will rotate over and really defend one side of the floor. All right, I'm gonna bring I'm, I'm gonna bring this up now. This is a long way from now. Six weeks, eight, six weeks ish or so. So mark this one on your calendar. March six, BYU goes to Hilton. So a, a lot will transpire between now and then between two most likely NCAA tournament teams, but. Put that one down as BYU has to go back to Ames. This had the intensity, especially in the first half of a March type of game, a, a mid March yeah. top 25 showdown. BYU will improve to 14 and 3, 2 and 2 in conference play as Havaletsky gets a late 2. Iowa State also now 2 and 2 in the conference. The Cyclones at 13 and 4. And Iowa State fans who are really knowledgeable basketball fans, T.J. Osselberger and his staff understands, just put this one behind you. It happens from time to time. It'll happen to BYU in the 18-game grind. This is an experienced program staff that will regroup. But if tonight was BYU's night, Sean. I mean, they were absolutely sound at both ends of the floor. And that's a big-time win and maybe a little bit of a statement beating the Cyclones the way they did tonight. The 80